Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're doing part three of our GPZ build series. Now, in today's episode, we're doing the upper triple clamp, and we're gonna be talking about what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how in this video. And then the follow-up video to this will go step-by-step -step through the process of measuring, 3D scanning the original, processing the mesh, designing the part in CAD, and uploading it to the sponsor of that video, which is PCBWay. So for this video, First things first, what are we doing? Well, we're redesigning the upper triple clamp for this bike. Now, the why to that is because when I started to build this bike many years ago, I used an 89 GSXR front end, and that front end was quite a bit shorter than the original front end on this bike, so much that it dropped two inches of overall height from the front. Now, normally this isn't a problem. We can kind of adjust things to make sense of it, but the width of the engine, as well as some other factors, things like the ground clearance for the exhaust, all of these things came into play. Now, the problem is that when I lean the bike over, the hard parts on the engine contact before anything else. So to remedy this in the series, we're trying to narrow the engine down, but also raising the front end back up by developing a clamp that allows the forks to slide down an inch, will get back some of the rake and trail numbers that I lost. Now, while I really enjoyed the way that this bike handled, making it a little bit easier to ride, increasing the rake and trail numbers are not gonna be a problem. It's gonna still handle great, but it will help out some of these other things that we're fighting with. Some general or basic information on how motorcycles work. The way that we steer motorcycles, especially when you're going at speed, is to shift the mass or the center of mass from one side to the other. When a bike is going straight and both wheels are pointing in the same direction, if your center of mass is directly between that point on the ground, the bike will still go straight. If you shift your weight a little bit to one side or the other, moving the center of mass, the bike is going to start to lean. Now, the way that this typically works with just handlebar input is because of the rake and trail numbers. A larger rake will be a bit more stable, but it'll be much slower to turn if you think about things like cruisers or choppers. A steeper rake angle will be much quicker to turn and much more responsive, but it's actually the trail number that is gonna dictate how much you have to turn the bars in order to get the bike or the center of mass to shift. And this is because the rake angle and that trail number move the contact patch of the tire in an arc. Turning the bars to the right actually shifts the contact patch of the tire to the left, meaning that the weight is gonna be shifting that direction. And this is why we counter steer when we talk about riding motorcycles. When you're going fast on the street in a straight line and you start to pull the bars a little bit to the right, that tire contact patch is moving and the center of mass is shifting enough so that we start to lean. In order to stand back up, we start to steer back into that direction. When you're going slow, things work a little different, but you can still go very slow, steer the bike in the opposite direction, and then you actually use the steering into the direction of turn to fight those forces and help stand back up. So by allowing us to create this dropped clamp, which allows us to lower the forks an inch or effectively raising the front end, we're gonna gain back a little bit of rake angle. We're gonna gain back a little bit of trail, which is driven by the offset distance between the stem and the forks. And overall, it's just gonna give the bike a different look. Now there was nothing really wrong with the way that the GSXR was set up, but the frame geometry was so different from this GPZ that it produces this offset issue that we're dealing with. Now, the process that we're going about to create this part involves a 3D scanner, but it doesn't have to. As long as you have the means to measure the geometry, in this case, the diameter of the forks, the distance between the forks, and then the offset to that stem, you'll be able to use those numbers to create your own upper triple clamp. But you have to remember if you're only doing one triple clamp, those numbers have to match with the bottom one as well. Now, a lot of other factors come into play if you do decide to play around with this. Things like the fender mount will change, but also the spacers for the front wheel, the location of the rotors and the calipers, a whole mess of things get affected by shifting these points around. So just creating one triple clamp, in this case, the upper, allowing us to shift everything down is gonna be the best solution for us. Now we're gonna be using the RevoPoint Metro X, and we're gonna walk through that entire process talk about the differences between full field and laser scanning, talk about how to process that scan, and align it with quick surface, and then we're gonna use Fusion to design our part. Now, all said and done, this triple clamp anodized black and bead blasted before that process from PCBWay was about $220. 
Now that is a screaming deal machined out of 6061 for this project. Now I did check around to some other vendors and I couldn't find anybody else that was even close to that price here in the US, unfortunately. So if you are looking to design your own custom parts and you need injection molding or you need CNC machining or sheet metal, PCBWay is a great option. I've had really good luck working with them over the past year. They're very responsive. The prices are great and the turnaround time is great as well. So on this project, we're one step closer to getting this thing done, but there's at least a dozen more parts that we need to design. Coming up next, I think we're gonna move on to doing the headlight to kind of complete and finish off the front end. And then we'll start to work our way back, dealing with some more mechanical parts like the rear sets. We have to deal with some simple parts like the shock reservoir clamp. And obviously we need to deal with some more complex parts like the tail section and some other mechanical bits as well. Now, if you have any questions on this, please let me know. If you like this type of content and want to follow along with this project, consider subscribing to the channel. We will be releasing these videos hopefully every other week for the project, as long as we can get parts made and in our hands in time. But we also have tons of other content on this channel going on for quick surface and plasticity and fusion and, and many other programs that we're going to be covering this year. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.